You are listening to the hippest radio station in the Tri-City area. This is Walk the Beat, the program dedicated to bringing you the latest in original music from our very own West Michigan. This program is supported by Chemical Bank, Mike Rose Landscaping, and Shoreline Insurance Agency. I'm Dave Palmer, your host of Walk the Beat. Today we are at the Greenhouse Studio with David Lampman. Hey Dave, how you doing? I'm doing well today, how are you? I'm doing great, I'm glad you made it on time and no snow this week, so everything rolled quick yeah, and nice sure. and easy. I did give you the wrong address though. Oh. <laughs> I put a four, I was supposed to be a four on you instead of the two, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. And thanks for bringing your lovely friend here, yeah. Je- Jessica, correct? Yeah. How you doing Jessica? Good. <laughs> hey, we're here to discuss your music. Now, uh, you have been doing lots of music for a long time around here. I mean, I probably met you over 10 years ago, wasn't it? Was it that long? Yeah, that was. I was in a different kind of music scene back then, for sure, but I was doing music. Yeah, still yeah. the same, still going along at it, and you have really, uh, the one thing about you is you do post your music, you keep it out there, you keep it fresh, you keep going. Right? I mean, yeah, the, the, yeah. about the only thing any songwriter can do is uh, keep writing. Yeah, it's it's hard, though. You know, you have those dry seasons, and um, I actually went through a whole year of not writing, and that was, that was kind of hard, but, you know, I came back strong and came out with a new album, so just had that time to think about music and, you know, why I did it, so. Very good, very yeah. good. Now, um... How you've been doing this longer than that? I mean, you're not that old. I'm almost 28. I look 16. Don't let it fool you. There's nothing wrong with looking 16. <laughs> um, but uh, how long have you been doing this? Um, pl- I got my first acoustic guitar when I was 21, and that's when I started playing guitar. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. And in fact, as I started playing with Big Daddy Fox at the theater bar, I still didn't know the name of my strings, the chords I was playing. Right. And um, I was very un- unrooted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but. but- um, Oh, go ahead. Keep rolling. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, um, I didn't know what I was doing except um, my real dad played guitar, and I had been a drummer in a hardcore punk rock band, um, and we, we played like 10 Bells and Grand Rapids, and we were trying to get on Warp Tour sure. on the Ernie Ball stage, and we listened to a lot of punk rock, and so I didn't know anything about guitar, but when I did get the guitar, I kind of used it as a, a therapy um, mm-hmm. to get through depression, and um, that, that actually drove me really far to write you know just to turn my poems into to music and all that stuff and just to hear it and well i'm glad you you mentioned this therapy part because i believe totally it's all about therapy for me also and there's so many people that use music for therapy that i don't know if the listening audience understands totally what a musician is trying to do when they're writing but you know you basically just want i i think uh you, you want people to hear you absolutely this is who i am this is where i'm at yeah are you with me or not you know? <laughs> uh, and yeah. uh i'm just glad that you keep writing uh now how long before you got into i mean you were a drummer I was a drummer. I still, I'm still pretty good. In fact, it's a funny story. I, I, I did an open mic night at the theater bar, and um, I, it was just local musicians getting together. There was a tip jar, mm-hmm. and Scott Pelgrim was one of the musicians. Oh. And I remember walking out, and he, I was like, "Where are my tips?" And he kind of chuckled, and I looked at him, and I'm, I'm like, "I don't know what you're laughing at. I'm gonna smoke you on the drums." And I had no idea it was Scott Pelgrim. I had no idea <laughs> yeah. like how good he was. Um, but he goes, I, was, okay. I, I mean, I'm pretty good, but I, you know, I can hold my own behind a set, but not like Scott Pelgrim. Yeah, yeah, he is quite off the hook, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, so I was a drummer, and that got me through my aggressiveness in high school. I mean, I was throwing chairs at teachers. I went to Fruitport. Gotcha. I got kicked out. Yeah. I was a huge troublemaker, and so my mom's like, we're going to buy him a drum set. And we lived in a trailer park, so they, you know regretted that after a while it was a small trailer but after a I was, while what 10 yeah, minutes <laughs> i was banging the heck out of those drums and yeah. um i got really good really good fast and nice. um you know then i just started playing shows with duck bomb and fallen idols and all the punk rock bands in spring lake wow um, that's that's great and, i had no idea i didn't know any of that part of your life yeah um it was yeah i just had a Really rough high school, mm-hmm. high school few yeah, years. Yeah, you just weren't fitting in, or you didn't feel like you yeah. felt. I mean, who did? And so I was a skater, and I hung out with the rejects, and and we just had our own clique. And the the punk rock shows were something that we all shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Look at yeah. that camaraderie. You all made it through. Yeah, for I mean, sure. probably your bandmates <laughs> were probably in a lot of the same spot you were. Well, yeah, my bass player is developing software for IBM in California right now. Wow, nice. And my guitar player James Falkowski, his parents own the Nunica Bar, and so he's actually quite involved in like oh. tool cover bands and stuff. So, sure, sure. Yeah, but 
we're all doing well. I'm just so glad you brought up the therapy part because uh, I just think that's just one little aspect of music that is makes it so important to keep music going and to help support the local musicians and it just is good for everybody. Yeah. And I tell you, this first song, Walls, mm -hmm. um, you wrote it. Yeah. Um, you want to give us a little background on your on this first song? Yeah. Well, um, you know, in high school, I had, I started just being drawn to the relationship, and I, in general, and so I started getting girlfriends and falling in love with a lot of girls and <laughs> and breaking hearts and not really knowing what I was doing, and um, it's funny because I was looking, I opened up this shoebox um, of letters from different girlfriends from back in the day, and I saw a letter written to me from one of these girls, and it was a poem she wrote, and mm -hmm. I I just then remembered that I, I used one of those lyrics of her poem in this song and it, it, called, uh -huh. it, it says uh, when you came around all the walls around my heart fell down and oh, so nice one. one thing I wanted to do is at first write music um, and throw little hints out there that I still miss the girl and, yeah. and so that was in this song and you know really the idea of letting someone in your heart is such a huge deal I mean no one wants to let those walls down not even for mm. a person for just anybody that wants to care and so yeah, I just I wrote about letting your walls down and um, letting that person in, and then I don't know. I, <laughs> that's that's all I knew back that's then. Good. That's the human all right. relationship. That's all right. And, so. and the music helps take them walls down. Absolutely, I love it. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Blue, let's listen to walls written and performed by David Lampman. Something to confess I'd like to get it off my chest Baby, I wanna try my best To see a girl and not go crazy